the Heisman candidate steps off the bus and into Bright House Network Stadium every Saturday. The focus, the intensity, the killer instinct. When Case Keenum takes the field today, the okay. nation's most yeah. prolific okay. passer will have one thing on his mind, leading his 15th ranked Cougars one step closer to a conference title. The CBS College Sports Network welcomes you to Orlando, Florida, a spectacular Saturday afternoon for college football in Conference USA. Prolific offense meets great defense. It's the number 15 Houston Cougars today taking on the Knights of the University of Central Florida. And welcome in, everybody, with Akbar Bajabia Miller. I'm Matt McConnell. You talk about Houston, you got to talk about that offense led by Case Keenum. Well, you know, as a former defensive lineman, I can appreciate an amazing quarterback you know I watch quarterbacks all the time and what I see in Case Keenum is something very special this guy's getting national attention because of his arm and because of the way he leads this offense you know Houston is really looking at the birth of a new Heisman winner we remember Andre Ware hey it's all about Keenum it was all about Keenum's drive in Tulsa last week. They trailed 45-37, but then cue the comeback. James Cleveland, third touchdown reception of the game, and the Cougars were within two, but the two-point conversion failed. So they go to the onside kick. Guess what? Recovered by the Cougars. They have life with less than a minute to go. So what happens? Keenum marches them right down to the 34-yard line of Tulsa, and cue Ben Hogan. A career-long 51-yard field goal with no time remaining. It was 46-45 in favor of Houston as they pull it off and three great wide receivers as well for Keenum to go to. Well, that game ended in a thriller and a chiller, but it really was because of these three wide receivers. These guys are a combination of skill, speed, and sure hands, and that's what makes these guys so good. And if I'm a quarterback, I love to have these guys at my wide receivers. No doubt about it. Case Keenum in the lowest wide receivers though today in Orlando are going to see the best defense overall in Conference USA. Well these guys up front are the real deal. Each defensive lineman squatting over 600 pounds. These guys are strong and they bring it up front with the pass rush. I like to see pass rushing defensive linemen, Gathers and Bruce Millers, each having nine sacks apiece. I like to see these guys coming off the edge and bringing heat and applying pressure to a guy like Case Keenum. But Josh Robinson is going to help with their pass defense. He's a rising freshman star in the backfield. And Akbar on homecoming weekend here at UCF. They're ready to go. The cheerleaders are getting the crowd fired up, as is the mascot. The night should be a great matchup as we now take a look at the coaching matchup presented by Jeep. Kevin Sumlin coming over a couple of years ago after being the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma, doing a great job with the Cougars and George O'Leary, sixth season here at the University of Central Florida. Good shot at Kevin Sumlin, and boy, can he direct an offense. Yeah, and he's learned under a lot of good coaches. Coach, Coach Stoops over at Oklahoma, he's learned a lot from him, and now he's infused it into this offense and to this team, this Houston Cougar team that's now nationally ranked. So we're set to go here from Bright House Network Stadium. The Houston Cougars will kick Chase Turner. Three touchbacks on the season. And deep for the Knights, number 14, Quincy McDuffie. One touchdown reception already, and we'll see how Houston and the Central Florida the Knights play this one, Akbar, because uh, talking to George O'Leary yesterday, they want time with the ball, do the Knights, but not just time of possession. They, they know they need to convert into points. It's going to be important for them to show their swag today. Underway on this gorgeous Saturday. Out of the zone and with the ball. Out to about the 28-yard line. 
Quincy McDuffie with the reception. So Brett Hodges, the quarterback for UCF. I like Brett Hodges. He's back in under the center. He's a guy that knows how to get his team going. Transferred over from Wake Forest to get an opportunity to play, and he's made the best of his opportunity beating out the former quarterback, Rob Calabrese, to get the position. First play from scrimmage here this afternoon in Orlando. Hodges in the shotgun. Out in the flat. Quick little flip along that time to A.J. Guyton. This redshirt sophomore out of Homestead. Picks up some nice yardage there. So we take a look at the difference makers for UCF. A.J. Guyton is the guy that's up and coming. He's starting to really get into his own, helping them out with the vertical attack. The Bryn Harvey of this world is starting for UCF again after being hurt last week. And then Rocky Ross, he's a sure-handed guy that knows how to catch the ball every time you need him, especially in the red zone. Second and seven. Harvey, the ball carrier, goes nowhere. As we take a look at the difference makers for the University of Houston on defense. In on that tackle, that last tackle is Marcus McGraw. You're going to see a lot of him tackling today. He's a good guy in the middle. And then Tyrell Graham, he's in there as a pass rusher, and he likes to get to the quarterback. So Hodges has got to watch out. And then C.J. Cabinets, this kid right here, plays sideline to sideline with intensity. Third and eight, so third and long here for the Knights on the opening drive of the football game. Hodges in the shotgun. Thought about throwing, finds a man over the middle, and that's caught. Quincy McDuffie out of Orlando, Florida, the freshman wide receiver. Well, we knew that we're going to see a lot of Quincy McDuffie. He's kind of starting to emerge now as another wide receiver to complement Rocky Ross. Good catch by Quincy McDuffie. And it's good for a UCF first down. 11 yard gain. Good start here for Central Florida. Hodges now goes under center. Two wideouts to the right. And right back to the running back, Brent Harvey. And he pulls his way towards midfield. You see up lineups coming off the top of your screen right now. Well, they look sharp offensively, and that first down, Akbar, really moving them along here. That's because of their offensive coordinator, Charlie Tapp. He's done something really unique with this offense, and that's create, give a put variety into their offense. They can run the option. They can, they can do all sorts of different things with their offense. Three wideouts here with a single back in Harvey. And again, it's Harvey. And he pulls his way for two or three yards. A look at the defense for the University of Houston at the top of your screen. Another well, show and pass on their offensive sets, but they've been going to burn Harvey. Well, that's what you want to do in order to get that passing game for the later in the game. You have to establish a solid running game, and that's with Bryn Harvey. And you want to put in that mind that, yeah, Bryn Harvey sat out last week, but he can run the ball, and he's getting good yardage today early. Yeah, Hodges and Harvey did not go at Texas last week. Play action. Wide open. A.J. Guyton lost the ball. And it's recovered by Houston. So Guyton with the catch and the fumble, and the Cougars offense will head to the field. Very important, especially when you have Houston at home. You do not want to give up the ball, and you can see Brinkley makes a good strip of the ball. Guyton has to have good ball security. When you look at where Guyton puts the ball, he has a lot of space in between that ball and his body. You want to keep that ball tight to your body and not keep... Look at the space there. Look at the space. He gives Brinkley an opportunity to get that ball. Big play by the redshirt senior cornerback Brinkley out of Bay City, Texas. So here's Case Keenum, first look this afternoon. Out in the flat. 
And that's going to go for about nine yards. Charles Sims out of Houston. He's a freshman running back as we take a look at the quarterback the profile of Case Keenum. Case Keenum is such a smart player. He knows how to read defenses. He can read defenses like open, like an open book. He knows where his guys are at all times. He uses the passing game as an extension of Second and two for the Houston Cougars. Four wide for Kevin Sumlin's team. Keenum over the top. Gone. Down to the 25, and what a grab that time. Number 35, Tyron Carrier, and he's the big play guy at wide receiver. Oh, boy, this is a big-time play. He runs an easy slant right in the middle of their zone. So much space and so much cushion in their zone that it's so easy for Houston to eat it up. Hurry up offense for the Houston Cougars. Tyron Carrier, the big play. At the 20. Keenum and he finds an open man that's James Cleveland and he'll get it down towards the 10 yard line the offensive difference makers for Houston if Patrick Edwards we talked about him early these guys are big time players James Cleveland their wide receivers read like the who's who and it's the track star Tyron Carrier that helps this offense with their passing attack ball at the 10 Keenum will hand it off, down and right up the middle. Hit that time was Charles Sims, a freshman running back from Houston, Texas. As we take a look at the difference makers on defense for Central Florida. Well, the rising star, Josh Robinson, at cornerback, is going to help them with their pass defense. But Jarvis Gethers gets after the quarterback with nine sacks. And then his buddy, Bruce Miller, also has nine sacks. These guys know how to find the quarterback. Keenum in the shotgun. Over the middle. Looking that time for his receiver, Chaz Rodriguez, and it's out of his hands, incomplete. Earlier this week, we spoke with George O'Leary, and he talked about how he's impressed with Kamal Ishmael, and you can see how he's matched up with Rodriguez in this defense. He's a good quarterback as well. You know, he's back there as free safety, knows how to play these guys very well. Second and seven for Keenum and the Cougars. Handoff, going nowhere. Forget about it. That stiff UCF defense shuts it down for a loss. Matt, you're going to have a hard time running against this defense. Terrell Troop right in the middle of that one for UCF. And as a defensive lineman, if you can get to the backfield before the play starts to develop, you're almost certain to have negative yardage. And Terrell Troop, I saw him in the locker room, just a big build guy. Third and ten for the Houston Cougars as they drive towards the student section at the right end zone. Flags come out. And this one's uh, likely to go against Houston. Holster, offense, number 70, five-yard penalty, third down. So it'll be third and 15, Akbar. Well, this is the opportunity now for Houston to kind of get a little field here and stretch it, especially stretch the zone defense for Houston, or for, excuse me, for UCF. But watch out for Jarvis Gathers when he gets out on that field and Bruce Miller. This is where they get alive. Three wide for the Cougars. Keenum looks left. Into the corner of the end zone. Great coverage down there. Justin Bodie out of Atlanta, Georgia, junior corner that time, breaking up the play. Good pressure up front, but Case Keenum has a quick release, and it's so easy for him to get it. But watch the coverage. The coverage by Justin Bodie. He stays right underneath just so Keenum has a hard time getting, and the, the wide receiver has a hard time adjusting to the throw. So Matt Hogan in to attempt. Uh, what will be a 34-yard field goal. He was the hero last week with the big winning field goal at Tulsa. And the kick is good. So the Houston Cougars settle for a field goal after a penalty on third and long, and Matt Hogan continues to be red hot.
college football on the CBS College Sports Network is brought to you by Bud Light. With just the right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. By DirecTV, no one else has all your favorite channels in HD. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. And by Energizer Lithium. Keep going. On the campus of the University of Central Florida, Houston on the board first with a field goal. Off the leg of Matt Hogan. UCF defense holding, uh, aided by a penalty on third down. And there is the defensive uh, coordinator. And Case Keenum, I guess anytime you can get off the field, Akbar, not allowing a touchdown to that man, Case Keenum, uh, you will be happy. Not only happy. You're going to be elated, especially the defense. You're going to be rejuvenated. You're going to have momentum. Those are called momentum builders when you can get Case Keenum on a drive and not to put out a touchdown. So Chase Turner will kick it off for the Houston Cougars. And back with it at the 20 and taken down. Good coverage that time by the Houston Cougars. Quincy McDuffie is stopped and so back out comes the UCF offense and now it's time to take a look at the keys to the game and they're brought to you by Energizer. It's going to be important especially with the fast paced Houston offense for UCF to score quickly. They're going to have to find that end zone and for Houston defense because of the running attack with the UCF, Bryn Harvey, you have to win in the trenches. Each man, man to man, is going to have to find a way to win in the trenches against the linemen. Tell you what, Akbar, they were on their way to the end zone prior to the fumble after the reception, and that negated the UCF drive. Let's see what they do here second time this afternoon with the ball. Bryn Harvey, and they think they can go up the middle on that Houston defense. Nothing there. Maybe a yard. And so it'll be second and long. Right in the middle, Hunter for uh, the University of Houston. David Hunter out of Waller, Texas. Sophomore defensive tackle. We saw a lot of uh, a lot of spreads in that first sequence for UCF, but they predominantly went to Brent Harvey. Four wide now for head coach George O'Leary. Hodges under pressure, and he's down at the nine. Big hit that time by Marcus McGraw. Marcus McGraw has so much intensity when he plays. You can see he smells and sniff out. The quarterback comes right through. You talk about winning in the trenches. Well, he just ran through the entire trenches. <laughs> he went there unabated, didn't get touched, brought down the quarterback. That's hard for any quarterback to get an offense running when you get guys coming. And that's a good call by a defensive coordinator, John Spladani, to bring the pressure against Brett Hodges. Talk so much about the Houston offense, but it's their defense getting it done right now. Third and 18. Hodges is going to look over the middle. Finds a receiver drilled and unable to catch it was Kamar Aiken. So three and out for Central Florida. Wow, that was a hit right there. You talk about a hellacious hit. Nick Sines just lays the boom right in his gut. That ball pops out. Good hit. That's football. You have to play on, but almost we talked about that earlier. You have to play almost on the brink of insanity when you play this game. Lowering that type of hit and bring it in. Blake Klingon from his five. Great coverage that time as it's stopped just inside the 50 yard line. Ronnie Weaver with a big hit there as Houston in the first quarter leads it three to nothing. Good look at the defensive coordinator Dave Huxtable three nothing Houston as we now take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by Energizer on the Houston offensive side. Well, if they're going to make good production, they're going to have to expose the young secondary. That's going to be huge for Houston. And then defensively, UCF has got to kind of put some pressure on that, on that quarterback. I think his name is Case Keenum, right? They're going to have to stress him out. Heard stress him. him out. So Houston will start this drive at their own 49-yard line. 
Keenum hands off nowhere that time for Bryce Bell, the sophomore running back out of Tatum, Texas. Offense for Houston uh, at the top of your screen as we roll on here in the opening quarter. Keep an eye on Tyron Carrier and James Cleveland, of course, for that big game. Three touchdowns last week at Tulsa. Second and ten. Four wide for Keenum. Pressure put on here. Throws a lob. They're wide open and all the way to the end zone. Touchdown. Tyron Carrier, and it's six for the Houston Cougars. Only Case Keenum can elude this type of sack pressure, especially from Bruce Miller, but he's so calm, finds Tyron Carrier, who sneaks behind the entire secondary. Now, as a defensive unit, you never allow a wide receiver to go untouched and to sneak behind the coverage. That is the recipe for disaster. So Tyron Carrier gets the first touchdown of the day for the Houston Cougars. Matt Hogan out to add the extra point. And they get a whistle prior to the snap. Bolt start. Number 70, five-yard offense. Repeat the try. So it'll be slightly longer, Akbar. Chris Thompson. Offside that time. 26th consecutive game with a touchdown pass for Case Keenum. He just continues to roll. That's consistency right there, Matt. Consistency. That's what you want out of your college players. 25-yard extra point. Matt Hogan. And right down the middle. So Matt Hogan adds the extra point. Houston with a 10-0 lead. Case Keenum loves it. His Cougars out on top. Back in Orlando, let's take a look at today's real-time fan poll brought to you by Burger King. The question, will Case Keenum break the single-season FBS record for passing yards? Text C1 for yes. Text C2 for no to 88. 2 2 2. And over the course of what could be five games, when you figure a Conference USA championship and then a bowl, Akbar, he's going to need about 400 yards per game. Well, that's going to be easy for him to, to break that record. You know, my answer would be yes. So I'm going to text, you know, C1 for that for yes, because Case Keenum is averaging more than 400 yards per game. And when you look at a quarterback that can do that, that's very impressive. So look for him to really be on the top of that leaderboard. So Case Keenum comfortably in front right now. 10-0, the Cougars leading it. And about set to kick it off once again. Darren Baldwin, one of the two deep for UCF. Back up the middle, pretty good little run by Quincy McDuffie, and he's out to about the 21. So the offense for UCF will come back onto the field here on homecoming weekend. Case Keenum now responsible, 106th a touchdown he's been responsible for in his career at the University of Houston, and it ties him with Kevin Cobb. That's a lot of touchdowns, Matt. That's a ton. <laughs> you know, I often wonder what kind of conditioning he does for his arms because the guy throws for a whole bunch of touchdowns, a whole bunch of yards. Jeez. So Brett Hodge is back out there. Might be changing it at the line of scrimmage. Right side caught. And trying to get free that time was Kamar Aiken, the junior out of Hollywood, Florida. Aiken's had a nice season, 20 catches coming into the game with four touchdowns. Over 1,100 yards in three seasons. And that's good for a first down. Second of this afternoon for the Knights of Central Florida. So UCF with a fresh set of downs. 
And this time the handoff to Jonathan Davis, and he'll break it for about three. Well, the quadruple header of college football continues today at 3.30 as the Navy midshipmen look to defend their home turf against the Delaware Blue Hens. Then at 7.30 Eastern, it's the main event featuring number four TCU and number 16 Utah at a top 25 showdown. It all wraps up at midnight with VMI and Army. Take the lead from West Point nonstop action all day on the CBS College Sports Network football first. Ooh, the Saturday night main event, TCU Utah. That is going to be noisy over there. <laughs> Back to pass and smeared that time was Brett Hodges. Excellent pass rush there by the Cougars. What John Scadani, the defensive coordinator for Houston, does is knows how to bring Marcus McGraw. You bring him out the middle, you bring him down the A gap, the B gap, or C gap. He finds that quarterback. He has that intensity. We talked about it in the beginning. Win in the trenches. And winning in the trenches is penetrating past the line of scrimmage. And that's what Marcus McGraw has done already twice today. And if you're UCF, you got to win in the trenches if you're going to have those sustained drives that George O'Leary talked about leading to points on the scoreboard. So far, it hasn't happened. Hodges, three-step drop out into the flat that time. And so this is going to be, oh, about a four-yard gain. That one brought in by Brendan Kelly, a redshirt freshman from New York. And bring up fourth down for the Knights. So fourth down and about five, and so Central Florida will have to kick it away. Clinging the punt, and A.J. Duga back for Houston. Big high punt. Duga calling for a fair catch, and so Houston will start their offense at the 28-yard line. It's 10-0 Cougars. In order for us to win, Casey's got to play at a very, very high level, which he's doing, but so does our team. And uh, we understand also that in order for him to be in that conversation and to be in New York, we got to win games too. And, and uh, our team has accepted that as, as, as part of our goals and, and part of our challenge. And, and uh, with winning uh, comes a, a lot, a lot of awards for a lot of people. Well said by the head coach, Kevin Sumlin of the Houston Cougars. And uh, hey, look at their schedule. You would figure uh, that they could run the table. They've got a 10-0 lead here today against UCF. They get Memphis and Rice in Houston to wrap up the season prior uh, to the Conference USA. Keenum over the top, complete. James Cleveland with the grab, and he brings it out to the 40-yard line. Well, Akbar, here are your Heisman candidates. Heck of a group of five. Well, you, what you notice is really that out of all of these candidates, Case Keenum actually leads in the category as far as yards and touchdowns in the country. So he's a guy that is a, a true Heisman hopeful and candidate. Big grab there and out of bounds. Complete. And, and L.J. Castile. Oh, nice hand movement using the swipe to bring down and to get loose. That's something that you teach defensive line is learning how to swim and use that technique to get open. That's good handwork over there by LJ Castile. And pretty good coverage, too, by Kamal Ishmael. Keenum back. Tries to dump it off over the top, incomplete. So that'll bring up second and ten. Tyron Carrier, the intended receiver. This is the Houston offense that we expected. Just little dump passes over the middle. Things that can rip it for 5, 10 yards. Nothing spectacular, but incredibly effective. It's called yards after catch because that's what their wide receivers are really good at. You know, Case Keenan, when you look at him and break down film, only 85% of his passes are over 15 yards or under 15 yards. Hand off that time to Bryce Bell. And that'll go for maybe two. Dana Holgerson, the offensive coordinator, probably a dream job in his second season uh, as part of the staff of Kevin Sumlin. There are the numbers on Keenum. UCF crowd getting into it, third and eight. Let's see what Keenum can do here. Finds a wide open receiver for a first down. That was body on the play. 
And caught by Tyron Carrier. Body with the coverage. Boy, Tyron Carrier's having a big first quarter here, Akbar. He's so fast. Track star guy can get up, get open quickly. Keenum looks around and he has another man, and that'll go for a first down. But the player seems to be uh, injured on the play. Down is number 19, James Cleveland, but he'll will get back up under his own power and uh, favoring. It looks like he's favoring that left leg, so he'll check out of the lineup. So the Cougars moving the chains and they're inside the 20 into the red zone here with a 10 nothing lead. Maxer split Keenum. Gives it off there. Big hit at the 10 yard line, but holding on to the ball that time was Chad Rodriguez, hit by Derek Hallman. Well, today's red zone is being brought to you by Moto Blur. As Houston in that red zone with the ball down at the 10. Second and two. Split backfield for Case Keenum. Adding it off, Bryce Bell, he goes nowhere. Nearly a takeaway. Whistle had blown, and now let's see what we get. Derek Hallman with the strip. What do you think, Akbar? It's such a strong defense. You can see them getting the ball out. Looks pretty good. Bell never touches. No part of his body touches the ground before the ball comes out. I think what's important here is going to be when that whistle blew. Exactly. Derek Hallman. This play is under further review. So they'll review it. Derek Hallman out of Fort Pierce, Florida. He's a junior safety. He thought he had it. You, you mentioned the whistle, Akbar. So let's take a look at the play again and see if we can hear the whistle. Oh, oh. Boy, that's close. I don't know. That, that may be overturned. Boy, that's a fraction. That's a fraction of a second before the whistle blows. That looks like that ball is out to me. Could be a momentum changer for the man on the right, George O'Leary, the head coach of Central Florida. Take a listen here. Oh, ball. The ball's out. I, I think I, the ball's out before the whistle. I think that's a turnover. But we'll wait to see. There, there's almost an initial whistle, and then you heard the full whistle. If reversed, it would be the third fumble recovery for Hallman this season. And they continue to review here in Orlando. Huge play of the game, too, Akbar, uh, simply because if Houston goes in here and makes it 17 to nothing, it's going to be very tough. Another look. Bryce Bell right up the middle, surrounded, and then the ball pops out. And Hallman started the other way. The player even comes out of his shoe just to get that. Oh, ball! Well, they going to be in review. It's going to be interesting to see what the officials. They'll look at it from every different angle. So many cameras in the arena today. They'll check out every angle just to make sure they get it correct. Overall, 981 reviews with 230 re 33 reversed. After further review, the fumble was recovered by UCF. Because of the progress on the situation, there is no advance. The ball will be placed at the nine yard line, first down. Huge play here in this opening quarter as UCF gets the ball. The student section doesn't like it because there's no advance, as you heard 
our official tell us, but a big change of momentum for George O'Leary's team. Well, if I'm UCF and George O'Leary, I'm happy with that just to have the ball. You want to get the ball out of Houston hands because these guys can put the points on the board and you have an opportunity now to get your guys to drive down the field and you have to be meticulous and purpose with what you're doing today's first and ten line is being brought to you by all state first and ten for the Knights of Central Florida coach O'Leary yesterday talking about execution on offense as being one of the keys and Boy, would this be a nice, long, sustained drive for the Knights. Ball on the nine-yard line. Eat up time. Akbar gets some points down to the other end, and it changes everything. This is two-minute drill time as they approach two minutes. Start getting in nice and quickly. And what I like about this offense with Charlie Tapp is he adds variety. He's got the option. He's got the spread, and he runs that pro-style offense. It's a good tempo and variety to change and keep the defense on their hill. Jonathan Davis, the lone back in behind Brett Hodges. Davis, left side, busting through a couple. Gets about two yards. So Jonathan Davis, the ball carrier, stopped that time by C.J. Kavnis. And that'll bring up second and seven, so they give them three yards on that pickup. And again, it's Jonathan Davis, uh, the single back, as three wide receivers now set up for Central Florida. Handoff, Jonathan Davis. Right side, nowhere to go, and he's thrown uh, for a loss. Taken down that time by Philip Stewart out of Missouri City, Texas. They try to set it up here with the with the fake and get the running back draw. Jonathan Davis, a guy that George O'Leary is excited about to have a combination of Davis and Harvey really adds to the element of this offense. They're going to have to get comfortable in this new offense. They're going to have to get it going, but establish that running game. And if you have a two-headed monster as a running back, that's pretty good. But Phillip Stewart was there to stop that play. Davis had 71 yards on 22 rushes last week at Texas. Hodges, plenty of time, looks up the field, finds Jonathan Davis, but he can't hold on to it. That would have been a first down. Broken up on the play that time by Houston's Brandon Brinkley. So fourth down for UCF. They cannot sustain the offense. Watch McGraw just coming in on the blitz. They're dialing up the blitz, keeping Hodges rattled in the, in the pocket. It's hard to concentrate like that when you get so many guys in your face. Not the greatest at punts, and it's going to roll out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Well, coming up at halftime, watch a special sneak preview of The Blind Side, starring Sandra Bullock in theaters everywhere this Friday. I would imagine I'll be off to see that movie at some point, Akbar. Yeah, I'm going to take my son, my daughter, my wife, go see that movie, get some popcorn. Big old bucket of popcorn, right? Yeah, popcorn is good for you. It's on us. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Drive starts at the 43, over the top. Oh, what a great read by Cleveland. Drops the ball, and it's recovered. Cleveland had the ball, is fumbled it, and UCF on the turnover. Michael Greco in on the play for UCF. There's only so many opportunities you can give another team before they come back and slice you. And right here, Cleveland doesn't have good ball security. Again, having all that space in between, when you look at the space that the, that the wide receivers are holding that ball, it's so difficult to hold on to the ball if it's not close to your body. Well, the UCF defense getting it done not only today, but all season long. Yards allowed per game, Akbar, 85.4. Stingy to say the least. And that rush defense that they have is 80 is number is 85 per game, and that's fourth in the country. 
Three wideouts now for UCF. Handoff. Harvey back into the lineup, and he goes for maybe one, one and a half. As Houston stopping that uh, run defense, McGraw, or stopping that rush offense uh, for UCF. McGraw in on the stop. It's been the McGraw show, really. <laughs> oh, he has had a great first quarter. And speaking of the first quarter, that is it. That's the final play. As that time, Bryn Harvey stopped for a loss. So Houston with a 10 nothing lead. UCF trying to get their offense going. Beautiful, sunshiny day on homecoming weekend in Orlando, Florida. You're watching the CBS College Sports Network. Watch more LG Game Day moments every Saturday on CBS Sports. Festive atmosphere here on homecoming weekend in Orlando. Coming over this morning, all the tailgating going on, Akbar setting it up and having fun. You know, they play a lot of games later in the day here, so the uh, noon start a little bit different uh, for the folks here that follow the Knights. <laughs> Speaking of the Knights, they've got the ball second and nine as we open up the second quarter here at Bright House Network Stadium. Pass the flat here for A.J. Guyton. Looks to break a couple of tackles. Guyton still with the ball. And he brings it out to about the 33-yard line with the ball popped loose. Houston says they've recovered, but evidently Guyton was down. Turnovers really starting to become a big part of this uh, ball game here. What Hodges tries to do is now, because of so much blitz is coming up the middle, they try to get it out to the outside, get Houston defense to swarm to the outside so they can get some movement. But I like to see A.J. Guyton on that, get north and south versus east and west. You get more production out of your play. I don't think there's any doubt that ball popped loose after he got onto the ground. Single back for UCF, and now they may want to take a look at this one. I was convinced that... But that ball was not a fumble. Okay. okay. Houston has challenged the fumble on the play and the subsequent recovery. So Kevin Sumlin in Houston challenging the call, but it appeared on the replay as we take another look here that, that he was down. You know, if I'm Kevin Sumlin, I don't know that I waste a challenge on that one. I think with the emotions riding on the, the previous two fumbles that Houston has, I don't know that I'm going to call that because it appears that A.J. Guyton is on the ground already. Take a look at his knee here. Yeah, his knee was definitely down, but I guess if you're Kevin Sumlin and you get a reverse, you would get the ball at the 32 up by 10. You could look at it that way as well. I don't think they're going to reverse this one. Or you, you take a look. Review. The player's progress was stopped. It was marked down. Houston will be charged with a timeout. Timeout, Houston. Play is confirmed. No fumble on the play. So Houston gets charged with a timeout, and the ball will stay with Central Florida. So he loses his challenge now and then also loses a timeout. It's so fine with those with those areas right there. But when you look at a guy that's already on the ground, those are the times that you have to kind of just kind of take it for what it's worth. Please reset the clock to 1437. 1437, thank you. So they're going to add 11 seconds back onto the play clock and put it at 1437. Good math. You said you were an accountant or finance major in college? No, no, no. I started as accounting and finance and quickly got out. I'll leave all that to my wife. In motion that time. Ricky Kay dropping back. 
Now Kay, oh, nice play there to get it out to about the 42-yard line. So Kevin Sumlin talked about him earlier, coming over from Oklahoma, who's the offensive coordinator there, leading Houston to the Armed Forces Bowl last year. And eight and five record. Most wins by any head coach in his first year at Houston. Started off winning eight of nine. His club with a 10-0 lead. Straight up the middle this time for Brent Harvey, and he fights his way for about three yards. So UCF first down, and they move the chains. I believe that's their fourth first down here in the first half. Again, George O'Leary talking about how they need sustained drives and drives the convert into points uh, if they are going to beat the fifth ranked 15th ranked Houston Cougars tripped up and nearly gone that time was Brent Harvey you know Matt I like that mentality when we talked about to George O'Leary talked about you know sustaining those drives and what happens is a lot of offenses will play ball control just to keep the ball out of Houston's hand. Well, you have to play your own game. You know, George O'Leary said, that's nonsense. You know, play your game. Play what you know. That's how you develop the confidence in your player, and then you also develop that confidence in the chemistry that they've already developed versus trying to play keep away. And they're doing a good job in the running game. Of course, Houston stopped the, the run play there in the backfield. You are who you are. <laughs> Rolling out this time, Brett Hodges finds an open man, and that'll go for about five yards. Brian Waters out of Rome, Georgia. He's a redshirt junior wide receiver with a reception. McGraw is a man on the mission. He has purpose. He's just, he's like, got like a heat-seeking missile or something. He's got it out for Hodge Hodges right now because he's been chasing him down through his visors. He can see right through him. He's like playing like the man of steel right now. He's had a monster first half here today in Orlando. Third and four, big down here for the Knights. Over the top, caught. Trying to break free that time, Brian Waters. And let's see with the forward progress. It's going to put him just shy of the first down. Matt, you expect a guy like Brian Waters, who's a, a redshirt junior, you know, think up the field, think getting that first down. When you start going east and west, it's so hard. You have to have good body awareness, know where you are, especially when it comes down to capitalizing in this situation, because now you put so much stress on the offense to actually convert the fourth down. Seven for nine on fourth downs this season are the Knights, and they're going to go for it. Fourth and one. Ball at the 46 of Houston. Handoff. Off tackle. They got it. Big play, Brent Harvey off right tackle. And he gets the first down for Central Florida. So they continue to have success on fourth down. It's where this they're, season. It's where they're strong. It's what, you know, in the trenches, you see the forward moving by the offensive line. You can see, you know, Ian Bastille getting up there, field goings, getting up into the defensive line and actually causing movement on that front. Brent Harvey, the lone back, three wide, handoff. Oh, nice little play here. Quincy McDuffie trying to break it around the right side, and that'll go for about yards on the reverse. I like, I like that dial up right there. Change it up a little bit. Keep them on their toes. And that's the weakness of this Houston defense is the edge. And if you can capture the edge as an offense on Houston, you can get a lot of good production on the sideline. Comes down to speed. Second and five here. As UCF has something cooking inside the Houston 40. Again, the ball carrier, Britt Harvey, and he's met by a pack of Cougars. That was the 10th play of the drive. And we'll have a third down. I want you to check out our offensive tackle here. 
Oh, well, excuse me, that's the tight end there. I want you to check out here, my man here, number 76. Watch what he does when he gets to play. And he moves him out the way, literally moves him out the way, and get that ball going. That's what you get going. That was Ja Reed, the redshirt junior out of Haines City, Florida. They're starting to get some push on that offensive line. Third and three. Beautiful play over the top. A.J. Gutman, he's got it down to the 25-yard line. UCF driving, and they've got something going here, Akbar. Good pass protection again up front, and finds Guyton gets up there. Makes big plays, but his ability to get open in their coverage is crucial and it's key for them to get this production. Now what they have to do, we talked about the keys to the game, get in the end zone, get in the end zone. First and 10. Ball at the 25. Trying to go up the middle that time and uh, nothing doing. Houston's defense just collapsing on the ball carrier, Bryn Harvey. Harvey had 679 yards heading into uh, today's game here in Orlando. Kevin Sumlin. And this will bring up second and ten. Three wide for the Knights. Look for the Knights to take the shot at the end zone here. Play action. And that's the big tight end with the ball. Adam Nisley out of Cumming, Georgia. And he brings that ball down closer to the first down. This current drive is being brought to you by the United States Postal Service. Akbar, the best drive of the afternoon in that the 14th of play of the drive. So sustained offensive momentum right now for the Knights of Central Florida. Let's see if they can put it in. Well, all they have to do now is put a stamp on it and deliver it in the end zone. Third and three. Hodges looking left. In trouble. Hodges scrambling, gets it towards the first down, but I think he's gonna be a little bit, a little bit shy. So decision time again for head coach George O'Leary. Now check out Theo Goins here. He's just going to lay it out, give Brett Hodges a little bit of time before it was a loss of yardage. Boy, Theo Goins really came in to protect the backside. Otherwise, Brett Hodges would have been creamed in the backfield. O'Leary says let's get some points. So on to kick it. The Tampa native Nick Katoy. A 35-yard field goal attempt. And it's good. Nick Katoy and the Knights of the University of Central Florida are on the board on this beautiful homecoming weekend. And now let's take a look at the Chili's game review. Case Keenum the story early as he hooked up Akbar with the Tyron Carrier who waltzed into the end zone. And how about your boy, Marcus McGraw? Oh, boy, his, he's got a wet palate and thirsty for the quarterback. He knows how to find that guy. But then UCF comes right back and gets into a stripping drill. You know, Hallman there gets the ball. Then Case Keenum gets in, tries to deliver. But then his wide receivers continue to drop the ball. That was James, James Cleveland. Cleveland. Yep. Nick Katoy just moments ago with a 34-yard field goal. So it's 10-3 uh, in favor of the 15th-ranked Houston Cougars. Time of possession right now favoring Central Florida in a big way, but uh, still 10-3 on the scoreboard. That quick strike offense of the Houston Cougars getting it done. On that drive on the field goal, the 34-yarder by Nick Katoy, 15 plays, 62 yards, and it went for 8 minutes and 27 seconds. So George O'Leary, he burns clock, Akbar. He gets some points on the board, and the Knights are back to within just a touchdown. Tyron Carrier, keep an eye on him, number 35. Two kickoff returns so far this season, one against SMU, one against Tulsa, that big one a week ago. This kickoff coverage team is, is just one of the top ones in the country right now. Well, they're going to bring it out. Big gap, and now trying to go all the way is Devin Mays, and Mays is going to go for the 30. 
into the end zone, touchdown! Devin Mays from Stockton, California. This is a kickoff coverage that was not giving up more than 16 yards per return. Well, everything is out of the water here. Runs right off the blocks, finds his guys, beat out the coverage team, and gets into the end zone. That's the way you respond to adversity when you have lost fumbles and lost opportunities. What a jaunt by Devin Mays. <laughs> <laughs> On for the extra point, Matt Hogan. Extra point good, just like that. Houston brings that lead back up to 14. Devin Mays, 100 yards on the kickoff return, his first of the season. So UCF had the momentum. Devin Hayes goes coast to coast. 17-3 Houston. This CBS College Sports Network program is being brought to you by Bud Light. With just the right taste that never fills you up, the difference is drinkability. Devin Mays gallops 100, Houston 17, UCF 3. And now let's take a look at the Bud Light six-pack in this football game. Akbar? What pops out to me, really, is the amount of yards that Houston's already put up in the air. 179, we're not even at the half yet. And these guys have almost got close to 200 yards. When we talk about Case Keenum averaging 400 yards a game, when you can get close to 200 yards a half, you're a finance major. What's the math on that after the end of the game? Over 400 yards of passing. Don't confuse me, okay? <laughs> I'll try to show you that count too. <laughs> So all the momentum has just been sucked out of this stadium. Uh, Houston uh, back up to that two touchdown lead and deep is Quincy McDuffie uh, for Central Florida. So McDuffie with the ball at the 10. McDuffie up the middle. McDuffie trying to go the other way just like Mays and a great return out to the 37 yard line. 17 to 3 Cougars. 15th ranked Houston with a 17 3 lead over UCF. Don't forget, coming up in the game, we will have the Home Depot tools to victory. As Houston just continues to roll here in conference, the USA. Brett Hodges trying to, to get that offense going down the field again. They had a nice sustained drive on the uh, Nick Katoy. 35-yard field goal, but then it was uh, Devin Mays uh, running it back for 100 to bring that lead back to 14. We'll see what he, UCF can do here with the ball. Handoff, right side. Bryn Harvey, and that'll go for about five or six. Stop by Nick Signs. Brent Harvey uh, didn't play last week at Texas, but his numbers have been terrific. 75.4 yards per game. That's ninth uh, in Conference USA. Really a go-to guy in a lot of different situations for Brett Hodges. He can throw to him. He can break it off tackle as he did here. And he's really developing into his own, and that's what they're going to need to do to get this offense going is to establish that run as he's running up the middle and just hitting them hard. Yeah, and we know he's a durable back as well. He had those 42 carries against Memphis earlier this season. Signs meets him right there, four or five yards down the field. If you want to keep your legs driving, a lot of running backs like to keep their feet stale, but you got to keep it driving, especially on contact. First and 10. Ball near midfield. Off the right side, they continue to work that right side with Bryn Harvey. This one goes for about four as they cross over into Houston territory. You, know, you got to watch McGraw just hawk Harvey down. He just hawks him. He's, he just has his eye on him the entire time. If you want to know a good linebacker, look at how parallel he is to the running back. He meets him right when he comes out of the garage, puts it right there, and parks him. Marcus McGraw. 
Scary part about McGraw, just a sophomore. Ooh. Part of that all-conference USA freshman team last season. Second and five. It's the perfect time to dial up a pass play. They're going to talk about it. Yeah, time out here for UCF. Timeout. UCF, first charge timeout. So while they talk it over, we'll step out 17-3. Homecoming here at the University of Central Florida, the homecoming court. Uh, getting ready, uh, four minutes and 53 seconds until they'll be honored at halftime. You know, if you're UCF, you want to take a pass out there. Houston's pass defense has been struggling this year, and you want to take an advantage of that. And I haven't seen UCF really stress that emphasis. You know, it's a good opportunity for Charlie Tapp to dial up a pass play. Utilize your wide receivers like A.J. Guyton and Rocky Ross. You know, you can see here, here's the guy right there we're talking about. He's a guy that we need to, to kind of get that thing going. Charlie Tapp, first season as the UCF offensive coordinator, coached in the CFL at Hamilton among uh, his stops. So third and two. Ball on the 43-yard line of Houston. Two back set. Handoff. And a first down that time. Bryn Harvey busts it through. And so they'll move the chains. C.J. Kavnis on the stop. Pulling that offensive lineman, getting out that, that defense, clearing out some traffic there to get it. But Houston's defense, run defense is stepping up. They're really responding. Another play. The team first that came in the with the rush defense, they came in at 114, close to last in the NCAA. These guys are showing some stuff today, especially against a running uh, offense. Ball on the 39. Handoff trying to go wide. Harvey all sorts of trouble, and that's thrown for a loss. So that defense you're talking about, Akbar, comes through again. Brandon Brinkley off the corner. The redshirt freshman out of Bay City, Texas, was there. Graham as well. He hails from Houston. And that resulted in a loss of six, so second and 16 now. They're swarming. This is a defense that's swarming. They're playing now, showing that this is an offensive unit that's got some good stuff that we can do some stuff and hold our weight on the defensive side, and that's what they've been doing. Three wide now for the Knights. Lone back in the backfield, Bryn Harvey. Hodges will go to Harvey. Bit of a hole to the 40. Harvey still on his feet. Harvey down to the 22-yard line. Matt, if you want to stagnate the process of an aggressive defense, you want to utilize the screen. That's what they dialed up. Charlie Taft, offensive coordinator, dialed that up. A perfect screen at the perfect time. When you're sending more blockers, excuse me, more defenders that they can block, that's when you utilize dump screen, and they pick up good yardage on that one. Harvey is now out of the game. He gets a breather. Handoff. Jonathan Davis. He'll try the middle. And Davis will go for about three yards. He's stopped by Marcus McGraw, who's been everywhere here in this opening half. Nine tackles now for McGraw. And we're not even into the second half. Woo! Nine tackles. Do the math on that. You do nine tackles in the second half, that's 18. <laughs> Plus two minutes to go to make a couple more, so he might be up around the 20 mark. Okay, now you're getting too fancy for me. <laughs> Second and eight for the Knights. Ball at the 20. Jonathan Davis, the handoff again. Big hole. Could he go? Davis stumbling down to the four-yard line. They're knocking on the door. O'Leary talked about being confident in Davis and being a fresh and young star coming in. He loses his balance, getting excited. I've been there, but look at the hole that the offensive line creates for him. Davis has to be happy with the blocking of his offensive line. Now he's got to finish up, get into that end zone, and stay on your feet, Davis. 16 yards for the freshman out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. 
Davis again gets the ball into the end zone. Touchdown. It's a one-two attack for the Knights of Central Florida and Jonathan Davis into the end zone. Now I want you to take a look at freeze it here. Watch the block right here. You can see that that clears open the ball for Davis to run right through a key block by Brendan Kelly. Extra point is good. First career touchdown. Jonathan Davis, and it's back to a seven-point game. UCF eating clock and getting points up on the board. And now let's take a look at the Lowe's Senior Class Award finalists. Well, Jerry Hughes, you're going to see him later on tonight, an academic guy. I think this is one that you've got to really kind of vote for, a guy that can get it done in the classroom and also on the field. Don't forget to vote for a Lowe's Senior Class Award nominee. Log on to www.seniorclassaward.com. Jonathan Davis, as we take a look at the scoring drive for the Knights, 10 plays going 67 yards culminating in his first career touchdown. Time of possession right now, heavily favoring the Knights of Central Florida. If you're wondering about the bounce on your television screen, that's how crazy it is here right now at Bright House Network Stadium. And I'm from California, so I'm used to earthquakes, but boy, you can feel it. Well, they squib it, and handling this one is Devin Mace, who went for 100. He's all bottled up here, and five players corral him down at about the 11-yard line. Well, coming up at halftime, we'll send you back to the inside college football studios. Sam Ryan, Brian Jones, and Amani Toomer of the BCS Championship Contenders Update. Adam Zucker and Tony Barnhart preview the Utah TCU game from Fort Worth. And we'll also have Akbar's analysis. All sorts of things to talk about here. Now, that defense for the University of Central Florida back out on the field. Can they stop Case Keenum with a minute 12 remaining in the first half? Keenum that time just throws it into the ground, broken up beautifully. Bruce Miller on the breakup. Good question. Will Case Keenum break the single season FBS record for passing yards? Don't forget, 8-8-2-2-2, C1 for yes, C2 for no. Second and 10. Flag on the play. Ball start. Number 75, offense. Five yards, second down. Look at the top of your screen, see Dane moving a little bit, getting a little twitch there, anticipating, trying to get out for the screen. When you see an offensive lineman get out that way, you know that their screen coming, trying to get up to that second level, but you got to hold your water when it comes to this type of situation. Second and 15, Keenum dealing with the student section. Rolls out, he's going to run. Keenum trying to get towards the first down marker, and he's close. Maybe a yard short as he brings it out towards the 20. Keenum knows how to read the defense. He sees there's breakdown in coverage. Then he starts to run, utilizing the ground game to get some yardage and get themselves in better position now to actually make some production and get that first down. Keenum back out there, third and one. UCF could get the ball back. Under a minute to go in the opening half. Right at the line of scrimmage. Did he get it? It's going to be close. And off to Justin Johnson. Good push. I would imagine they're going to want a measurement here. Terrell Troop was right there once again, and they're going to say first down. Good push up front. 22 seconds left. Case Keenum, and he's been in this situation so many times. Drops back, pressure on. He's tripped up.
big stop that time by David Williams, the redshirt junior out of Lexington, South Carolina. You better watch out. If you have that ball in your hand, just know that either Gethers or Millers is coming after you. And that's Miller's the, a guy. That's the final play of the opening half. Case Keenum heads to the locker room. Interesting first half to say the least. So 17-10, Houston. At the end of one, we've seen a little bit of everything. Don't forget, we'll send you to the studios inside College Football Studios. You're watching the CBS College Sports Network. Well, a gorgeous day here in Orlando, Florida from Bright House Network Stadium. Halftime between Houston and UCF and the cheerleaders getting into it. It's homecoming weekend. They had the court out just moments ago and uh, it's been a lot of fun here, Akbar, and a pretty good first half. Let's get into your analysis and what unfolded in the first two quarters. Well, it really starts with Tyron Carrier. Tyron Carrier being the guy that knows how to find open spaces. And you can see Carrier here and then Keenum knowing the weakness of cover two defense, watching the zone area. Carrier runs a slant and That's actually gets in there and makes a productive play getting out and beating the defender. But then when you talk about Carrier now, watch it here when Corey Holden, number 59, gets caught with his back turn. Carrier sneaks behind the defender and Keenum knows how to find this guy, Carrier. That's one of his three catches for 95 yards in the first half. But special teams is where it's been made, and Devin Mays makes a point here when he gets a good block by number 44, Tyler Chamber, setting up the open pick, using his speed to get up top. But check out number 12, Tim Mercer with the block up top. And then Mays uses his speed, beats it out, gets to the end zone, and puts it in. And some big plays here in the opening half as we take a look at the first half stats. Uh, those passing yards, we knew they'd be big uh, with, for the University of Houston. And again, uh, Case Keenum pretty much right on pace for getting around 400 yards. But the momentum in the second quarter started to swing over to the Knights of Central Florida. Look at the time of possession. 22.52 for the Knights to just 7.08 and that big play quick strike offense for the University of Houston. That's three times the amount when you get into the time now. That's ridiculous. Sets up for a great second half. Uh, Houston will receive. Underway here in the third quarter. And the hero, Devin Mays, on that big long return is stopped here. He got stopped on a punt return late in that the second quarter. And so the offense for Houston will head back to the field. A one-two punch uh, is something else as we take a look at Case Keenum. Numbers from that first half, 10 for 14, 179 yards, and the touchdown. You can check out Case Keenum. Boy, man, when you put that kind of yards up front, I'm just, I mean, you got to be impressed. And the offense has got to know that now the score being so close that you need more out of Keenum. Drive starts at their own 23 for the Houston Cougars, fighting through a couple of tackles that time and getting the ball about four yards is Charles Sims. Freshman running back out of Houston, Texas. So for George O'Leary, uh, when the Knights are trailing at halftime, they do have the three wins. And a couple of weeks ago, that big comeback against Marshall. They we'll see if they can back. do it again. Yep. Case Keenum. Drops it off. Nice little drop pass that time. Charles Sims, and he stops short of the first down marker. So this will bring up about a third and two. When you, you want to get that running game, which they don't have going right now, they utilize that screen as an extension. Get up there and get moving. Houston struggles, believe it or not, in the running game. We know this is a dynamic offense, but their running game is really 64th in the country coming into this game. So they got to use like, those kind of passes, like, even like right now. Into the flat, Charles Sims. He stopped short of the first down. So Houston will kick. Corey Hogue out of Naples with the stop defensively. So three and out for the Cougars to open up this second half. Now check out Hogue coming in there and closes really quick because when you want to get those guys going, you got to come up. Play. And O'Leary talked about that in our meeting. Getting up there and closing fast. Chase Turner on to punt for Houston. A.J. Guyton alone 
player back for the Knights. Knights bringing the heat. Guyton at his 30. Breaks a tackle. Guyton to the outside. He'll bring it back towards midfield. So great field position for the Knights to open up their offense here in the second half. 17-10, but A.J. Guyton for Central Florida has got them back at midfield. Their offense next. Dave Huxtable talking to his defense here today in Orlando. They had a stop just moments ago, getting that offense back out onto the field. 17-10 Cougars leading it. Today's first and ten line is brought to you by Allstate. So great field position for the Knights. And they have a chance to go down the field and get the game tied. Handoff. And this is going to go for about nearly ten yards. Great play there. And pulling it through for Brent Harvey. Close to a first down. You keep the drive alive by keeping your legs alive, and Brent Harvey keeps his leg alive, legs alive, and keeps it pushing. He finds good blocking by number 73 in Bastille, the center, getting those guys out of the way so his guy can get in there and get some good yardage and productive yardage as well. Harvey stays in there in the backfield. Second and two. Harvey, the ball carrier. Brings it off left tackle. Let's see where they mark the forward progress. I think it's going to be good enough for a first down. And who else on the tackle but McGraw? This guy's a one-man wrecking crew. I like the way he plays. He plays with this, this gusto, and I like the, the flavor that he brings to this defense. Harvey and McGraw, it's been a great matchup to watch all afternoon. So first and ten. McGraw has been absolutely terrific, had nine uh, tackles in that opening half. Three wideouts for the Knights. Right side, caught! Kamar Aiken! And that'll bring it down inside the 25. Well, we, talk, we talked about the, the, the struggles of Houston's defense, their pass defense, and this is now where you start to expose that. You see Brandon Brinkley couldn't really get over the top to swipe the ball out, but that is a good use of your pass offense against a weak defense. First and ten. Harvey this time stopped in the backfield. Tried to go right, and he was met by a bunch of players, including McGraw. So nothing doing there for the Knights. Graham as well in on the tackle for the Cougars. Well, Graham's a transfer from Arkansas. Uh, really explosive off the edge. Get there, get into the quarterback's face. They're going to need a lot out of him as far as getting to Brett Hodges. That'll bring up second and 12. Opening five minutes of the second half today in Orlando. Little dump pass on the left side this time. Kamar Aiken doesn't get much, but he's close to the first down. Or excuse me, back to the line of scrimmage. And that'll set up third and long. Tyrell Graham leads the, the team in sacks. Getting up there, getting pressure. If you're not getting sacked, get in the space. If you're not in the space, get in the backfield. Disrupt the backfield. Third and ten. Ball at the Houston 23. They lead it by seven. In motion to the left, Quincy McDuffie. In the flat, McDuffie's got it, and he'll get a first down inside the 10-yard line. Great motion play that time by McDuffie, and it's a first down for the Knights. In the red zone now. Capitalize and utilize your opportunity in the red zone. McDuffie gets out there, 
runs a nice little run out to the outside. They pick up the first down. Now you have to get in to the end zone. We talked about this end zone being crucial for them. Today's red zone is being brought to you by Moto Blur. First and goal for the Knights. Harvey, the ball carrier. Harvey up the middle. Harvey to the end zone. No signal yet. And they're going to mark it inside the one. Good effort by the offensive line. Getting push. Watch Harvey as he stretches it. He has the whereabouts and the wherewithal to get out and stretch the ball. Very close, but they're going to say he was down. So they mark it inside the one. Second and goal for the Knights. Two tailbacks set. They'll give it to the second man, Jonathan Davis, right at the goal line. Touchdown! Brent Harvey finally used that, runs right through McGraw, showing that his pound for pound, he can step up to a McGraw that they've been meeting all day, and he ends up getting the better of that. Extra point, no good. So 17-16 the score. Nick Katoy cannot connect. But off tackle, it was Bryn Harvey as he pulled his way in. But the extra point, no good one-point game. College football on the CBS College Sports Network is brought to you by LG. Life's good. By Home Depot, more saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And by Chili's. Get Chili's to go for your tailgate party and visit PepperInSomeFun.com for a chance to win a trip to the biggest game of the year. Welcome back to the campus of the University of Central Florida. Beautiful facilities here in Orlando. One of the up-and-coming institutions, to say the least. A beautiful student village uh, right behind us here at Bright House Network Stadium. Uh, they've got tremendous facilities, a brand-new medical school here uh, in Orlando. A real up-and-comer uh, in the world of college academics, for sure. And the students are enjoying it. Well, the stands here are aluminum, so if you see your picture bouncing a little bit like you see there, Akbar. Uh, the students getting into it. That's got to be fun. One point game right now. Tyron Carey, or excuse me, Carrier with the ball and stopped right at the 20 yard line. A one point game. Q Case Keenum back to the field. Well, it's time to take a look again at today's real-time fan poll brought to you by Burger King. The question, will Case Keenum break the single-season FBS record for passing yards? C1 for yes, C2 for no to 88-222. 91% of the nation says that he will. And my partner, Akbar Bajabia Miller, right now, as we speak, is texting. Are you going to tell us your vote? Yep. C1. Case Keenum will. And we talked about how he would need, uh, Akbar, about 400 yards per game the rest of the way to break that record. So far this season, he's at 423.9, and he's back on the field with a one-point lead. Deflected pass that time off the fingertips. Looking for his receiver, uh, Kier Johnson, and that's incomplete. The defensive line does a good job of getting their hands up. You know, when you watch Case Keenum on film, you notice that he's got a low trajectory. So it's going to be important for guys like Terrell Troop to get their hands up, get into the backfield, get the hands up, and you can deflect a lot of those passes. Second and ten for the Cougars. All sorts of time for Keenum. Now he's flushed. Keenum looking up field. He'll just throw this one away. Big time flush that time out of the pocket by that UCF defense. 
And that entire right side just comes out, and they keep bringing the pressure. You see Darius Nall going in after the chase. Bruce Miller, everybody getting their hands up. And that's what you're talking. You want to run parallel to that quarterback, flush him out, get your hands up so hard for a quarterback to throw over that. Third and ten, time of possession, heavily favoring UCF, but they trail by one. Keenum drops. Keenum sacked. Down he goes at the 10-yard line. Bruce Miller out of Canton, Georgia with the takedown. That's his 10th sack of the year. An amazing feat. 10 sacks in a season, and he is their sack master. He comes off the edge, uses pure pass rush move to get past the offensive lineman. When you talk, check out his move there. He uses a little rip in there, goes in there, and goes straight for the quarterback. When you throw that rip, the first thing you want to do is turn your hips and get to that quarterback. I love pass rushing. That Conference USA leading defense for UCF gets it done again. Chase Turner the punt. And he gets off a great kick. Single man back, A.J. Guyton. At his 38, he fumbled it. Bobbled the ball. And now UCF is going to have to just cover on top of it. Reggie Weems out of Baton Rouge. The D-back, who's a junior, is able to recover it. But instead of having the ball at about the 35, Akbar, UCF's going to set up their offense from about the 15. No, has no possession of the ball. Perhaps the sun's in his eye, but you got to be able to possess that ball, bring it in tight. He loses that. That's a real bad position, especially when you talk about now trying to take the lead. You stop Houston's explosive and potent offense, and now you're in a situation where your back is against the wall there. Bruce Miller is having a monster day. So far this season, 42 tackles, 12 and a half for a loss, and he's got those 10 sacks. So it's first and 10 at the 15 for the Knights. Third quarter today in Orlando. Thanks for joining us on the CBS College Sports Network. Seam and he finds Quincy McDuffie who brings it all the way out to the 43-yard line. Nearly broke it. McDuffie says, first down, move those chains. And oh boy, are they moving it with fashion, Matt. Comes out a little rollout, quarterback rollout, finds McDuffie. But you're taking advantage of an opportunity now. You see a weak defense. You see McDuffie open. You get your back against the wall. That's the way to respond. These guys are responding. And they're, they're playing this game with fight to them. Quincy McDuffie set up wide. Three wide receivers set. They'll hand it. Harvey off left tackle. And he'll get it back towards the 47-yard line. With a little help from Home Depot, let's see what made this drive a success. Well, this is, this is their last drive right here. They really started off with the punt return. Then you give it to Bryn Harvey. Bryn Harvey gets it on the ground. He takes it that belongs to him. Then they open up finally with the passing game. Finds the wide receiver, and they come right back into the running game. Those are the tools for the victory. Injured player on the field. I believe it's a uh, UCF night scoring drive numbers eight plays 51 yards four minutes 17 seconds of clock Harvey that a one yard a touchdown rush. And we are. Uh, here's what happened it looked yeah I think it might was it 77. Uh, Nick Pichel. Yeah, Nick Pichel. Oh. Looks like he gets rolled on. Redshirt sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Left tackle helped to his feet. Let's hope he's okay. Yeah, he's a Broward County kid that, that they remember back there in his high school days. Started the final seven games in the 2008 season. Was a team captain in his senior year of high school. One of those leaders up front for the Knights. So Pichelle has started at left, left tackle uh, every game and would imagine he'll be replaced by number 75, Mike Buxton. These are some big offensive linemen. 
Well, Nick Rochelle, 6'7", 302 pounds. That's a big guy that you're losing. And then you just replace him with Hong the go, Well, Hangshel goes 311, Bustillo 302. They are, they are big up front. Everybody over 300 pounds. And then Buxton comes in. He's 6'8", 309 pounds. <laughs> they get bigger. Hand off here. Harvey trying to break it. And he brings it out towards the first down marker, and it looks like they may have enough. So first down for the Knights as they move the chains. Fighting for everything that they have here. This is a UCF team that is determined. They're determined not to back down to anyone, not even a national ranked team. But what's interesting is that, you know, coming into this game, they've only lost one game in conference to this in this home in their stadium. Well, you saw the look at Pichelle as they're going to cart him off. First and 10 from the 47 of Houston. Out in the flat, caught the reception from Ricky K. So all of a sudden, Central Florida Akbar taking really a page out of the Houston offensive playbook by just little five, six yard games. Yep, using that, and they set that up with the play action. You can see they set the play action using it, faking it to Brent Harvey, and then finding K out there. Ricky K, he's a guy that he can, he brings a, he's got good hands too, especially as a halfback coming out there and utilizing him as a receiver slash running back. Brett Hodges has done a nice job helping mix it up here for the Knights. Second and four. The give to Harvey. He's going to bust it. Harvey to the 20. To the house. Touchdown. <laughs> 59 yards on the touchdown. I want you to take a look really at those guys really coming up the top. But when you get a guy who can run and hit it hard, Brent Harvey hits it hard and fast, and that's how you get production. <laughs> Boy, he found his way to the end zone quickly. Extra point on the way. What a day for Brent Harvey. Had that breakout game with a 42 carries and 219 yards a couple of weeks ago against Marshall. Extra point is good. This upset really brewing Akbar in Orlando. Yep, it is. This is something that we talked about here. Now check out the play right here. You can see the offensive lineman here really clearing out the hole for Brent Harvey. He good block on Marcus McCraw. Brent Harvey finds out, runs off the backside of his blocker. Excellent job. Excellent vision as a running back. They celebrate here on homecoming weekend. Five plays, 85 yards, kept off by number 34. Let's go, Brent Harvey. And don't forget the Knights against ranked opponents. They have yet to win. They're 0-22 all time. That drive, uh, Akbar, two minutes, 18 seconds. Big plays in this game so far. I mean, you look at the time of possession. Normally, Kevin Sumlin uh, runs a lot of plays do his Cougars, but the time of possession in that first half slanted heavily uh, towards the favor of UCF, and they've now got the lead for the first time this afternoon, and the crowd really into it. Hey, Matt, the Knights need one more victory to become bowl eligible, and they're 4-1 at home this season. It's a great opportunity and against a big-time opponent. Tyron Carrier from the three. He's got a scheme. Carrier back towards the 30, and he's taken down. The return game today for Houston has been electrifying at times, and Case Keenum electrifying in his own right. Again, don't forget about our texting question today. C1 for yes, C2 for no to 88-222. Will he break the passing record? He's got to do about 400 yards a game. We've talked about that. Have a little fun with it. Go ahead and text it to 88-222. So first and 10 at the 31. Nobody home. Great coverage in the secondary that time. The UCF defense starting to bring it, and now they're mixing it up a little bit on Case Keenum. So that'll set up a second and ten. 
Four wideouts for the Cougars. Keenum has time. Great catch that time, Tyron Carrier, just inside the 40-yard line. Keenum so determined to get his guys going again. Getting these guys up. These guys are not used to trailing like this all the time. Sets up a third and two. Over the top, Keenum, and a first down for the Cougars. Did you see the quick release by Keenum? Wow. James Cleveland, the reception. And the chain gang moves. First down, Cougars near midfield. They trail by six. First time they've trailed all afternoon. Dropped. Unable to haul that in was Carrier, broken up by Corey Hogue. Houston is no stranger to coming back in fourth quarter ball games. Right now, 4-13 remaining in the third. Second and 10, they'll blow this dead. Bolt start, 75 offense. Well, they get Mike Buxton, who came in to replace injured Nick Pichel. Offside for the junior lineman from Bonita Springs. Second and 15. Keenum down the middle, drew down the play and unable to hold on to it. That time flags come out. Chaz Rodriguez got lit up by Kamal Ishmael. But a flag on the play. What a hit as they discuss. Personal foul, number 74 offense, hands to the face. Personal foul, number 18 defense, striking go. Penalties offset, replay second down. The last thing the officials want is to see a guy hitting a defenseless player the officials will call that, but check out 74 at the bottom, getting his hand all in the face of Jarvis. Oh my goodness. Out in the flat, caught. Back towards midfield that time was Charles Sims. So those penalties, uh, Akbar, they offset. And this will bring up a third and eight for the Cougars. Oh, is this place electric right now? Houston trailing by six. Keenum will drop it off. Drilled, oh, what a hit that time. Leveled on the play. Charles Sims as he got lit up by Lawrence Young, a junior out of Pensacola. Boy, that was a knock, knock out hit by Lawrence Young. Finding Sims closing the gap. You can see him targeting him all the way down. He puts a Pensacola Roy Jones hit on him. Put them down. UCF allowing their opponents to convert on just 37% of third downs this season, forcing Houston into a punt situation. A.J. Guyton signals fair catch, and he makes it at the 15. First half, big plays by Houston, but since then, that defense of UCF has been dynamite. Twenty-three seventeen upset brewing in Orlando as Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator, uh, talking it over. And now let's take a look at the Bud Light stat pack here. 
With 2.55 remaining in the third quarter, time of possession was a big deal in this one. Heavily favored to Central Florida, but the story of this game right now is the University of Central Florida's defense really stepping up. Well, the big thing to me that stands out is total yardage. They've now started to balance their pass yardage to 180 yards. They're rushed now. They have more yards going right now than Houston. To me, that tells me they're starting to balance it out with their offense. Mm. You would mm -hmm. think those numbers would be flip-flop. No disrespect to the Knights. As this one's handled by Bryn Harvey. And tackled down. Jonathan Davis correction on the carry and so that'll bring up second and seven check out the big boom and Foz blocking for your running back comes out there open it up camera gets juked out but these guys don't get juked out they know how to get in there and get going so the ball on the 18 second and seven UCF with a six-point lead Jonathan Davis gets the ball again. He'll go left side. Strung out beautifully. Good contain that time by those Cougar corners. They're committed to this run game. They're committed to starting a drive that's going to begin with the run and end with the pass. Look for them to continue to set it up with the run and then start taking shots. And they've done that. They're catching up. They're already again starting to balance it out with their offense. Third and ten. This would be a huge stop for the Cougars defense. Down the middle of the field, nearly picked off. It is picked off. Bouncing ball picked off that time by Carson Blackman out of Tatum, Texas. Huge play. And so Houston will take over. When you talk about big play situations, Carson Blackman has saved. Houston in this situation, getting these guys going, moving forward. But that's what you want. This gives them the opportunity now to get Case Keenum back. All the defense wants to do is get Case Keenum an opportunity to find his wide receivers in Carrier and Cleveland and Edwards and finding all the guys. LJ can steal. Turnovers playing a role in this ball game. Keenum all sorts of time. Now he's just going to throw it into the turf. Wise move that time because even if he hooked up with Charles Sims, it would have been a loss. Total yards in, in Akbar, you were talking about it when we went through the uh, stats six pack. Season totals average 577.9. Today, just 218. And that 577 is an NCAA best. Well, they're going to meet their best in this half to gain control and gain offensive points. Keenum. Goes over the top, right to the end zone. No good. No good. Castile said he had possession, but they waved it. No catch. If LJ has possession and it's taken a couple of steps in the end zone, you can see he has possession. Still fighting on. He's running into it. That's a touchdown. But they can't challenge. Wow. Because they use their challenge. They use it all up. Crucial situations like this is when you want to have a challenge. Perhaps the officials will call a challenge. Correction. They have not used their challenge here in the second half. Keenum over the middle. Caught. James Cleveland. At the 23 yard line. So Houston continues to roll. I'm a little surprised at no challenge. Minute 18 left here in the third quarter. Keenum, and this one out of bounds, intended for the receiver, Tim Monroe. It's just to correct, it, it is one challenge for half. Akbar, they, they could have gone to the challenge, but. You see Coach Sumlin probably not wanting to lose this opportunity to have a challenge in his back pocket. 
When a game is this close, you need to hold on to your challenges because further down the line, you could use that. But boy, that was a great opportunity, though, to change the dynamic of that game. That's a touchdown. Second and ten Cougars. Keenum looks, corner of the end zone. He's got a wide open receiver, but he overthrew Patrick Edwards. So third and ten, Case Keenum, and we've talked about a lot of the, the little five, ten-yard passes out of Keenum. There, there's no question uh, that Kevin Sumlin does want him to go deep and down the field, and he tried it that time. So a huge third and ten here. And Dave Huxable, defensive coordinator for Central Florida, is going to get his cornerbacks, Josh Robinson and Justin Body, to challenge those guys, become more aggressive and force them to go vertical. they got to get it to the 13. Keenum is back. Caught over the top flag. Penalty marker on the play. I think they're going to get Josh Robinson for pass interference. Pass interference. Defense number 20. Spot foul. Automatic first down. Huge break for the Houston Cougars as Robinson that time over the top. Coach talked about wanting these guys to play aggressive, not being afraid to make mistakes. We know he talked about Josh Robinson being hard on himself. Ooh. Just the second penalty this afternoon for UCF. Sims on the completion. Today's red zone is being brought to you by Moto Blur. Cougars in that red zone right now with the ball on the 10-yard line. Second and eight. They can get a first down. It would be just inside the two. Keenum to the middle, and he finds Cleveland, who brings it inside the five. Michael Greco on the stop. So Houston here, will they get a playoff? They do not. So through three today. What a game. What a game in Orlando. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. UCF 23, Houston 17. You're watching the CBS College Sports Network. Upset brewing as we start the fourth quarter here in Orlando. UCF with a six-point lead against the nationally ranked Houston Cougars. That's the first scoreless quarter since September the 12th at Oklahoma State for the Cougars. But they're on the doorstep. Third and two. Ball at the UCF four. And now Case Keenum has to contend with that student section. Over the top. By Cleveland. Little slant play to James Cleveland, but he can't hold on. So hard for him to hold on right there. You need to put that ball into your body. Hold on to the ball. Cleveland. You see the ground hitting it, turning it up. This situation, you have to score. When your back is against the wall, you can't you can't soak on it now. Matt Hogan on to attempt a 21-yard field goal. And the kick is good. 23-20, Hogan the hero last week against Tulsa. What a game, fourth quarter, three-point game. 
from Fort Worth. Six meetings, Utah winning five of the six. We referenced last year's Utah win by three. And Jordan Wynn, the Oceanside High School quarterback, will take his first shot at TCU in what could be an epic battle. You live in Southern California, giving a little SoCal love there. Oceanside. Well, I actually covered him in high school, and he was a phenomenal player in high school. You've covered a lot of people. <laughs> so a three-point game here in Orlando. And Houston, or excuse me, UCF will bring it out. Wide to the right that time, bringing it out, Quincy McDuffie, and he is stopped. The ball will be marked right around the 20-yard line. Well, be sure to catch the blind side starring Sandra Bullock. It'll be in theaters everywhere this Friday. So UCF with a three-point lead, Akbar. Opening minute of this fourth quarter today at Bright House Network Stadium as UCF trying to pull the upset. And their offense back out onto the field. If you're George O'Leary, you're thinking about killing clock, getting some points. Touchdown here would put them up by 10. Two scores. Hand off there. Brent Harvey, not much room, and he may get back to the line of scrimmage. Matt, you alluded to something that really is a key coaching point at this point is managing the ball because when you're in a situation against a Houston team like this that you know that they have that potency to their offense, don't give them the ball. Why would you do that? So keep the ball in control, establish that run, get that run game going, use the combination between Harvey and Davis, and you could have an upset. You mentioned uh, holding on to that ball. Ten points so far today for the Cougars coming off turnovers. That touchdown in the first half of the field goal just moments ago. Hodges looks. Flushed out of the pocket. He's going to go deep. He's got an open receiver. Caught. What a grab by Kamar Aiken. The junior wide receiver from Hollywood. Brett Hodges does a good job when everything starts to break down, keeping the ball alive with his feet, getting out there, and then Kamar Aikens adjusts on the on the route. You can see here, watch Kamar Aikens. He looks, he's looked, then he adjusts on the route. That's what you call an option route. You start to make it up and get it and get the first down. Jeez. Into Houston territory, go the Knights. Brent Harvey up the middle, got about one. Brett Hodges, and we've made so much of Case Keenum in this game today, but Brett Hodges having a great afternoon. The UCF quarterback, 18 for 21 with 206 yards passing. That's incredible, absolutely incredible what we're witnessing here. We're witnessing Brett Hodges, a senior, starting to make the move. Harvey now in the backfield. He's got 26 carries for 116 yards. Just an average workload for him. <laughs> Hodges, they look to go inside. And dumped on the play for a loss. That play went nowhere. Brian Waters trying to do a little inside move, but they snuffed that one out. And Phillips Dewar was the guy who sniffed that one out. And then you can see him does a WWE suplex on him. <laughs> Upset. Upset in the situation, but now he wants to give the ball back to the offense. Fans here wanted a personal foul, but they won't get one, so the ball just inside the 49-yard line of Houston. Third and 13. Up the field, Hodges looks, sideline, caught! First down! What a grab for Brian Waters! That, my friend, is an exceptional catch because that was good coverage by the cornerback, Brandon Brinkley, coming in there, swiping down. But the concentration of Brian Waters, watch his concentration. He keeps it all there, and you can see he even goes up. He climbs up the invisible ladder to go get that ball and keeps his focus on that ball. Two feet in, that would have been good in the NFL. Ball on the 34. Powering his way back up that time, Bryn Harvey. 
Harvey with one of the biggest plays in that third quarter, a 59-yard touchdown scamper. And UCF on that four-yard game comes up second and six. Now they I, have to get points here, Alpha. They do. They're, they're, this is the opportunity for them to score. And I can tell you in a test that, you know, as a player, that you can go into a situation playing against a UCF team and feeling like you can dominate a player and fall asleep on a team. It looks like Houston's falling asleep on this good UCF team today. Handoff sweeping right. This time it's A.J. Guyton cutting left. And he is pancaked down at the 25-yard line. That's going to be close to another first down. Guyton trying to capture that edge using the good old stretch play to stretch out the defense, stretch it out and see if you can find an open. But you can't be apprehensive when you hit that attack on the edge. Now you have to hit it and you have to hit it fast. Akbar third and short, about a yard for this UCF offense. You gotta shove it right in there. Hand off Hardy. And I think his forward progress got him the first down. Correction. So a first down here. Harvey pounds it in there like cake. Gets that first down. They'll mark it just outside the 23-yard line, first and 10. Four of these guys are showing fight. Harvey the workhorse, 121 yards on those 28 rushes. Scrambling, Hodges, and he's taken down. He was a little slow to get up on that play. Harvey, you can see there, Brett Hodges escapes that. The defensive lineman, you can see he gets a punishment down there towards the end, gets a little banged up there. But if you're a defensive lineman, you don't want to over-pursue the quarterback. And you can see the defensive line for Houston over-pursued and lost the opportunity for a sack in the backfield. That could Har have been a difference maker. And Harvey Akbar stays in the ball game. Harvey, the ball carrier. Fred Hodges uh, just uh, banged up a little bit there on that play, and now this is going to bring up a third and long. David Hunter on the stop for the Houston Cougars. So, Akbar, what do you do here? Third and 11 from the 24. I'll tell you right now, I can expect them to go to A.J. Guyton on this on this play or a Brian Waters. But if I'm if I'm one of those guys, they're going to go to. A, a... Well, Waters and Guyton are set up on the right. Over the top. Intended. Touch. Did he catch it? Touchdown. Quincy McDuffie. The freshman wide receiver from right here in Orlando, Florida with a touchdown grab. That is amazing. Didn't utilize the wide receivers. Utilized the guy coming right down the middle. What a catch. McDuffie there. Double coverage. Nick Katoy for the extra point gets it. The offense of UCF becoming the story, spurred by their defense. 9.03 to go. Brett Hodges goes into double coverage, and it's pulled down that time by Quincy McDuffie and the Knights with a 10-point lead. A final look at today's real-time fan poll. It's brought to you by Burger King. Will Case Keenum break the single-season FBS record for passing yards? C1 is yes, C2 is no. 88% of America thinks that he will. 88-222 if you can get a quick vote in there. And by the way, those yes votes include my partner Akbar today voting yes off his phone here in the broadcast booth. Yep, utilizing my iPhone here.
But you're going to dial up on your app now and see that the score is lopsided now. <laughs> UCF is up on top right now, so it's Score. interesting to see. Scoring drive, 11 plays, 79 yards, covered 5 minutes and 44 seconds, and a 10-point lead now for UCF. Owners of the best conference USA defense. Devin Mays. And he's taken down just outside the 20-yard line. This team, UCF, flourishes on kickoff coverage. We talked about that coming into this game, only giving up about 16 yards on the kickoff return. So that's a pretty good thing. So this is this is an opportunity for now. They stop these guys outside of 16 yards, get them to see what they do. First and 10 for the Cougars. They've got the ball at their own 21. Keenan, Tyron Carrier got drilled, couldn't handle the ball. And now let's take a look at the Bud Light stat six pack. UCF is just killing Houston on total offense. The pass yards, they're just killing. I've not seen Houston go into a situation where they just, they get lopsided this way. And you can see the amount of possession that they have is unbelievable. You've got to be kidding me on those pass yards. Wow. Second and 10 for Case Keenum. Good coverage now. Here comes pressure. Picked off. Nope. Incomplete. Josh Robinson from Sunrise thought he had it. Matt, we talked about Josh Robinson being a rising star. He's such a young and talented kid. Remember the interception last week he had against Texas? Showing his ability, getting in there, and just couldn't bring it in. Just didn't have enough to bring it in, but that's still a big stop. Third and ten. And you'll know if the Houston drive continues after this play. Just by the reaction. Picked off! Towards the end zone with the interception. Justin Body. as if Case Keenum just threw it right to Body. He saw Cleveland coming across, and Body was able to just really pick it up there. It almost appears as if he was right there. Body put UCF in a good situation now. Ball inside the 10 and a chance to go up by 17. Into the corner, towards the end zone, lunging! Touchdown! Bryn Harvey! My tongue can't even begin to form the word for the expression that I'm feeling inside. What we're witnessing here is perhaps one of the most colossal upsets in all of college football. Wow. Third touchdown of the afternoon for Harvey, a seven-yard scamper, extra point, count it. UCF has increased their lead to 17, and it all started on a Case Keenum pickoff. Right there. And then who do you give it to? Number 34, Bryn Harvey in from seven. So much talk about the Houston Cougars coming in 37-20. They trail the Knights by 17. Don't forget the Knights, 0-22 all-time against ranked opponents. And that is the stadium vibrating.
Take a look at the second half surge here. And I'll tell you what, UCF, they did it a couple of weeks ago against Marshall, trailing by 10. They've done it four times so far this year, Akbar. Boy, it looks like they want to continue to add on to the resume. But if there's ever a time that a record reflects something of this magnitude, boy, it's now. They squib it, so Tyron Carrier is going to have to pick it up inside of his own five. Five defenders down there, and they stuff him at the four. Now let's take a look at the drive of the game, and it's brought to you by Scion, a game changer, Akbar. Well, Brett Hodges really found Quincy McDuffie to get the goal. Everything started on this drive, and then the Brett Hodges finds Harvey and just keeps driving him and driving him, puts him down in there, and finally gets the ball into a situation where Harvey could just run, and boy, did he run like a Scion. 59 yards on the touchdown. Caught that time by James Cleveland, and so that'll be a pickup of about six yards. Numbers on Harvey, 128 yards on 30 rushes. Talked about his 40-plus rush performance in terms of carries against Marshall. Second and five. And that one incomplete. I'm baffled right now. I'm baffled at the the lack of days ago and the they don't have it. They don't they don't have the um the drive, the determination to actually put this put a drive together and take it down the field. I don't see it. Third and five, four wide for the Houston Cougars. Defensively, UCF has brought it. Total effectiveness out of the Knights here, especially in the second half. Carrier dropped it. Would have been a first down. And now Houston, inside of their own five, is going to have to kick it away with under eight minutes remaining. Boy, they're playing good coverage, and they played good coverage. UCF, that's something that they struggled coming into this game. But they cleaned it up some way, somehow. They've cleaned it up here in Orlando. Tyron Carrier upset. UCF will get great field position out of this one. A.J. Guyton, the lone player back for the Knights. Good kick. Fair catch for Guyton as he looks to play it. Now Guyton's going to take it. I thought he called for fair catch. He did. He started to run. And so we will get the UCF offense back out on the field. 17-point lead. <laughs> Biggest upset so far this season brewing in Conference USA in Orlando. 17-point lead for UCF, and now it's time to take a look at the icy hot quarterback hot zone. Not Case Keenum, Brett Hodges. Man, Brett Hodges came into this game, Matt, 57 percent that's below average this game he's been 84 percent completion rate and that to me spells out accuracy that comes out it tells me that you're being poised in the pocket it tells me you know where to find your wide receiver where to place him getting a better feel and understanding of where your guys are perhaps his week off last week against texas has given him some rejuvenation and some some open to his game Terrific day for Brett Hodges, who started his college career at Wake Forest. Passed for over 300 yards a couple of weeks ago against Marshall with a couple of touchdowns. 7.41 to go. The Knights are up by 17 against the 15th-ranked Houston Cougars, and they have the ball. In motion for UCF is Kamar Aiken. Handoff. Brent Harvey. And he'll get about three yards on the play. Now let's take a look at the Bud Light stat six-pack. Talked a lot, uh, Akbar, about the passing yards. And you would think that those numbers uh, would heavily favor the Cougars of Houston with Case Keenum. Not so. 
Uh, Brett Hodges, as we just showed, having a great day, total yards, domination on the UCF side as well. Well, we talked about the offensive coordinator, Charlie Taff. A lot of that has to do with his experience and his background. You know, he was with Army where they, you know, that they had different types of things, excuse me, the Citadel, and they had different type of production with their option, and it's giving a fit to their defense, Houston's defense. Man in motion that time was Aiken handoff. The ball carrier, Britt Harvey. And he'll get a couple. Harvey, prior to that play, 31 rushes for 131 yards. Tyrone Campbell in on the tackle. Uh, it'll be interesting. I don't know if we're going to see a lot of passing uh, from Central Florida at this point. No, you Although won't. third and four. Yeah, they're going to keep it. They're going to start to just control the ball. This is where you want to control the ball. But when we're going back to the offensive coordinator, you know, he was at Army. He was at Maryland, Pittsburgh, you know, in the past 25 years. And then the Citadel, what you have there is what I'm kind of saying is that he's got a variety of offense, and Houston really hasn't seen anything like that this year. Charlie Tapp has seen it all, that's for sure. Falling down that time was Brett Hodges. So that's going to bring out the punting unit. Charlie Taff. Houston. First charge timeout. First timeout for Houston. Charlie Taff uh, right there in the middle. He even uh, had some experience in the Canadian Football League at Hamilton. But the experience on this Central Florida staff uh, put together by head coach George O'Leary. And then on the other side, you got the, uh, the up and coming Kevin Sumlin, 1988 graduate of Purdue. You know, Coach Taft's son plays baseball here at the school. Third baseman for the baseball team. And I'll tell you what, we've got great camera operators here, and uh, the reason those cameras are bouncing is because this place has been rocking all day long. The band in the end zone, and, and look at that scene, Akbar. The students out in force here on the campus of Central Florida. It's homecoming weekend. They had the big basketball game last night. Uh, Marcus Jordan uh, making his uh, college debut. Michael Jordan was in the building. Uh, a packed house. Uh, this has been a great weekend here. Capped off this afternoon with an incredible game at Bright House Network Stadium. Wow, it's been a star-studded event, and you can cap it off having Michael Jordan here at UCF, and then to cap it off with a big win, that's huge. That's big time. Big time prime time. A.J. Dugat, the lone player back for Houston. Kick is away. Dugat that time, and he got drilled right at the five. So Case Keenum in the offense for Houston is going to get the ball back. They need another fourth quarter comeback for sure. Well, if anyone can do it. I don't think you can ever count us out of a game, you know, no matter uh, how much time's left or, uh, you know, what the score is. And I've, I've found that out each and every week that we've done that. And uh, you'd rather not have those kind of wins. But uh, at this point in the season, we'll take a win however we can get it. Can they do it? They're down by 17 to the air. He goes once again. Finding a receiver. This play will go for about six yards. Patrick Edwards on the reception there. Keenum's numbers. In fourth quarters, he's been absolutely terrific. In the flat. On the right side. Breaking a couple of tackles this time is Kier Johnson. And finally brought down. So that'll bring up a first down as they move the chains. Case Keenum trying to bring everybody quickly to the line of scrimmage with about five and a half remaining here. Keenum looking around, got tripped, flipped it along, nearly picked off. So dangerous. And a heads up play that time to stop the clock with 524. Case Keenum watching it through, watching it develop. Gets tripped up by one of the UCF defensive linemen. Yeah, Justin Body there. Wow. So second and ten. Keenum looking around. Cannot convert with his wide receiver, Chaz Rodriguez. It's not often you see Case Keenum 
come up short like this. What you've seen is Dave Huxable has put out his best pass rushes now to kind of get after Case Keenum. You're going to stress the quarterback, and that's what we talked about. One of the, the keys to the game is stressing the quarterback, and now he's got Miller and Gathers out there to stress the quarterback. So Akbar, that brings up third and ten. Pressure on Keenum, steps away. Now Keenum's going to race for the first down marker, and he's out of the 35-yard line, and he gets it. Keenum gets the first down on the run to the right side, and he also stops the clock as he got out of bounds. That's good heads up by Case Keenum. He eluded a, a lot of pressure, got out of bounds, stopped that clock. It's good heads up. Handoff up the middle. Charles Sims, the freshman running back, with a big gain near a new first down. We'll come up about one short. Boy, they waste no time here as we roll under five minutes remaining. Houston down by 17. And now we got a whistle. Timeout. UCF, first charge timeout. And UCF calls timeout. Well, the quadruple header of college football continues today at 3.30 as the Navy midshipmen look to defend their home turf against the Delaware Blue Hens. Then tonight at 7.30 Eastern, it's the main event featuring number four TCU and number 16 Utah in a top 25 showdown. It all wraps up at midnight with BMI and Army tape delayed from West Point. Non-stop action all day here on the CBS College Sports Network. Football first. Speaking of first, Houston just about a yard shy of another first down on this drive as they try to battle back with Akbar Baja Biamilla. I'm Matt McConnell today from Orlando. You know, Matt, if Case Keenum pulls this game off and comes back, has to be a Heisman winner. In the flat, caught. This one will go for about four yards. Charles Sims on the reception. Taken down by Young and Hogue. Keenum's numbers. He's put it up 43 times, 250 yards. Handoff here up the middle. Breaking a couple of tackles and yet close to another first down. Greco knocks him down. Sims that time for the game. And you got to wonder when are you going to go long? I mean, 4.25 to go. You got the ball at the 44. Let's see what Keenum does here. Keenum looking around again out in the flat this time. He finds Tyron Carrier. Well, that's close to a first down. Look, I'm not a fan of the short passes when your back is against the wall. Fourth quarter, four minutes left in the game. You need to start taking shots. You have wide receivers like Tyron Carrier, James Cleveland, and Patrick Edwards. Air it out. Up the middle handoff here, breaking a couple of tackles. Nice run by Charles Sims that'll bring the ball down towards the 32. That's not what you that's not what you gotta do. Another first down as they'll move the chains with 404 remaining. You're down three scores, you're running the ball, you're taking time off the ball, off the clock. Not to mention they need a stop, even if they score here. Keenum, he's going to go deep this time into the corner of the end zone, just over the top of the intended receiver. Kamel Ishmael, that time on the coverage. Patrick Edwards couldn't come up with it. So second and ten, that stops the clock with... 3.48 to go as Edwards just a little too far out of his outstretched arms. Tyron Carrier. He'll bring the ball. Carrier's going to go to the five. Touchdown, Houston. Well, that's what I call a bona fide screen and a touchdown. Tyron Carrier just on this play just shows excellent proprioception by standing up on his feet and hitting it, hitting it hard and getting into the end zone fast. But now it's going to come down to clock management. It took them a little long to score on this drive, hoping that they would have done this a little earlier to give themselves an opportunity to get back into the end zone. Matt Hogan for the extra point to get Houston to within 10. No good! 
Brad Hogan, the hero last week in Tulsa, misses an extra point. So it's an 11 point UCF lead. 3.39 to go. Carrier now, six receptions for 135 yards and a couple of touchdowns. College football on the CBS College Sports Network has been brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Michelin, a better way forward. And by The Blind Side, starring Sandra Bullock in theaters everywhere this Friday. What a game today at Bright House Network Stadium. 3.39 to go to the fourth quarter. An 11-point lead for UCF. Scoring drive, missed extra point. 12 plays, 94 yards in 2 minutes, 23 seconds. Tyron Carrier, the 31-yard run in his numbers this afternoon. So Chase Turner will kick here for the Houston Cougars. Quincy McDuffie deep along with Body, and now they're going to squib it. Picked off. So going to go 10 yards. Let's see who comes up with it. Onside kick. They're saying they came up with it. Still a scramble for it, a big old pile down there, and UCF comes up with the onside kick. Kevin Sumlin's team set up, they, they, they set up as if they were going to kick it deep. That definitely went 10 yards, but recovered that time, I believe, by Alex Thompson. Gainesville, Florida native, redshirt senior linebacker. That was a good dial-up. Looking to perhaps get the same type of result they got at against Tulsa. So the gamble does not pay off. 11 point lead and UCF with the ball here. Hand off to Harvey. And he'll bust it up for two, maybe three yards. Each team with two timeouts remaining. As we close in on three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, Harvey now 33 carries on the afternoon for 136 yards. George O'Leary, he said coming in yesterday when we met with him in the coaches building, Akbar, he said, we're not going to change anything. We're just going to play our game. He says that's the problem. You brought it up earlier in the game that sometimes teams try to change their identity. And not so here. And they've done a good job of keeping that identity. Hand off there to the ball carrier, Harvey, right to the middle to eat up clock. And now we get another timeout here called by Houston. Houston timeout. Timeout. Houston. Second charge timeout. Some 30 second timeout. Well, Akbar heading into the game today, we knew how good the UCF defense was. Heck, they lead Conference USA. But their, their, their defense has really been the, the telltale of this game. They put applied pressure to Case Keenum. He's got the sacks. Troop has been up there in the middle. And then even the hits that they've been laying on there, the wide receivers. But what I'm so impressed with is the coverage area of this defense. What came into this game as the weak point of this defense turned out to be the strong point of this defense. And it's what's carried them. When you're going against a team that is strong offensively and can, can throw the ball, that's what you need. And Dave Huxtable has done an excellent job as far as calling up this game. Huxtable is wearing the headset. Season totals rush defense 85, which is tremendous. Fourth of the NCAA. 32 today. Are you kidding me? That to me says that if you can cripple their, their run defense and put the stress on their on their offense to, to the wide receivers, Man, shut them down. And Josh Robinson has been the head of that as far as shutting down the wide receiver for Houston. I'll tell you what, they got something special going here in Central Florida with his football program, and it's been a great season, too, for the Houston Cougars coming in 15th in the country, but not so much right now. They need to get that ball back, trailing by 11, which is 242 remaining. Houston. And Houston final calls timeout. their final timeout. timeout. Uh, 
All right, coming up next, we'll send you to Annapolis, Maryland for more college football. Fresh off their win over Notre Dame, the Navy midshipmen look to keep rolling against the Delaware Blue Hens. Two years ago, Delaware shocked the Middies at home 59-52, and now Navy is looking for revenge. The action comes your way next only on the CBS College Sports Network, football first. And later tonight, it'll be TCU and Utah. We'll have BMI and Army on tape delay after that big game in Fort Worth tonight. Here, a huge upset brewing in Conference USA. Houston Akbar is now out of timeouts. They trail by 11, and it's UCF with the ball as they'll punt it away. And that missed extra point, huge at this point of the game because you'd need a field goal and a touchdown for the two-point conversion. Just the top. And you can see UCF bringing a little trickery in here. Kick is away, aim for the corner. And this one nearly down to the one-yard line, but it'll be Houston ball at the 20. Well, so much uh, this year, Akbar, a lot of talk about the BCS top 10, Florida big game on CBS at 3.30 against ball coach at South Carolina. And of course, our big one here on CBS College Sports, TCU, Utah tonight. Uh, your thoughts when you look at that list? Well, when I look at this list, I think about TCU taking on number 15, number 16, Utah, and talk about the impact of where that drives TCU up the chart to get into perhaps number two or number one. Here's Case Keenum, first and 10. Pass in the flat. And that's caught, and that'll go for about eight and a half, nine yards out of bounds, too, to stop that clock. You know, TCU going that Utah game is so crucial. I I'm interesting to see, interested to see what the voters will say when TCU or if TCU defeats Utah in, the, in a huge win in the, in the Mountain West. Second and three for Case Keenum. They're down by 11, 2, 16 remaining. Keenum outside, unable to get out of bounds. That time was Tyron Carrier, so the clock continues to roll. Or actually, they'll stop it for the first down, and the chain gangs move. Don't forget, no timeouts remaining for the Cougars. So they move the chains, and the clock begins to roll again. Carrier trying to go wide, and he's knocked down. Why are you not going downfield deep, Akbar? Matt, I, I can't figure it out. I can't figure out what the offensive coordinator, Dana Holgerson, wants to accomplish by throwing screens and little 10-yard outs. You have to go deep in order to give yourself at least a chance. Picked off here, nearly picked off, and bobbled that time. Otherwise, it would have been six. Josh Robinson again. Josh Robinson is the one of the best cornerbacks now in Conference USA. He's shown it today. He showed it last week against Texas, and he's doing it again. If you have this kid on your team, you are so excited at what he's done. He didn't make the interception, but the fact that he's going to be credited for a pass breakup, that's telling you that they are now secure in their pass defense. Four wide this time for the Cougars. Charles Sims, the lone back. Outside and out of bounds it goes. First down. That pulled in by Patrick Edwards. So they'll move the chains again with a minute 36 remaining in the fourth quarter. We keep waiting for him to go deep. It's going to be hard to go deep when you got a kid like Josh Robinson out there. They're starting to understand what his impact is to this game. Keenum coughs up the football. It popped loose. And that's, that's Jarvis Gathers. Jarvis Gathers comes from a family of sack masters. His father, Jumpy Gathers, is a kid. I talked to his brother this week talking about his impact. That's now 10 sacks for him. Second and 17. Under pressure, Keenum. Back through the middle. Unable to come up with the ball that time. That pass intended for Patrick Edwards. Great coverage defensively in the secondary for UCF. So that'll bring up third and 17.
We, we talked about Jarvis Gathers. This guy comes from a family of NFL players. You know, his father, Jumpy Gathers, played in that Super Bowl with Doug Williams for the Washington Redskins. His brother, Jeremy, was with the Saints last year. His cousin, currently with the Bengals, is a force for that defense. They've been doing well. And then his uncle, his father's brother, is a former defensive lineman with the Buffalo Bills. They go out into their backyard during the summertime, work on pass rush moves. His dad was known for the forklift, and he's got a lot of that recipe that he uses in his game to get to the quarterback. He is a force, and you'll see that kid playing on Sundays. Made a great play here on this series for Houston. Third and long. Pass in the flat. Complete. Back up to the 45, but that's okay if you're UCF. They'll take that all day long as we roll under a minute remaining in the fourth quarter. The only thought process I have for the logic of throwing throwing screens is just playing it safe and really throwing in the top. I've not seen this characteristic, this, this character from Houston. Fourth and 11, they need to convert. Pass over the middle. Here they go. Down to the 18-yard line, but a flag on the play. What a grab by Patrick Edwards. It's about time they've got it down there, but there's a flag on the play. I think this will this be going against uh, UCF. Pass interference, defense number 38. Penalty is declined. Derek Holman, their outside linebacker, is converted from safety back to linebacker. And he's, a, he's their best coverage guy as far as linebackers concerned. First and 10, Keenum, does he have another comeback? This time he gets sacked, but he gives it off. Ball goes right into the hands of Rocky Ra or excuse me, uh, Charles Sims. And he is down to the 15, but clock, the clock rolls. 18 seconds to go. And they spike it. So 16 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. They almost have to score here, Akbar. They have to. And pray for then, a miracle. Yeah, and then you've you, you got to get the onside kick, and you, you might have one play, but that's getting way ahead of ourselves. Look at the student section down to our right. Third and six, four wide for the Cougars. Keenum is flushed. Into the end zone, touchdown! Chaz Rodriguez, and it's not over yet. Wow. Case Keenum getting out of there and finding, finding Chad Rodriguez breaking out the pocket. And they'll go for two here, obviously. They have to go for two. Convert here and get the onside kick. He can kick a field goal to get it to overtime. UCF, second charge timeout. So George O'Leary and the Knights call timeout. Case Keenum rolls out, trying to find it, trying to stretch out the play. The wide receivers kind of know once Case Keenum gets out that pocket, start to adjust your route. And they found Chad Rodriguez in the end zone. That obviously helped them with that end zone, that touchdown. Keenum talks it over. The reason they're going for two is because of this play. Earlier in the fourth quarter, Matt Hogan, the usually reliable Matt Hogan and the hero of the Tulsa game a week ago, shanked the extra point wide left. So they have no choice but to go for two here and then get the onside kick and maybe one play down to set up a field goal. And keep in mind, Houston has no timeouts left in this game. They've used up all their timeouts. So it's going to be interesting to see how they manage the short time here with 10 seconds left. Should also point out, too, that both teams today, Akbar, have missed the point after attempts. So here we go. Going for two of the Cougars. They have to. Keenum. This will take time off the clock as well. Now Keenum scrambling. Keenum to the end zone. Over the fingers that time. So the two-point conversion does not work. And I have to correct myself. Time did not come off the clock, so they are 10 seconds. No one there. Wow. 
close. Couldn't get it. Case Keenum has to be hurt. He has to be hurt on the inside. James Dean leaps out, just couldn't put the final touch in grabbing it. He, he reaches out, stretches out as far as he could, just a bit outside. The mood on that sideline. Can't even describe it. So now Houston trailing by five. They'll have to recover the onside kick and, and maybe go Hail Mary. Special teams have been big for Houston. We can't forget what happened last week. And this is a perfect opportunity for the special team to step up. We know what the offense can do for this team. If this Houston special teams can carry on, they will be able to carry the team. Now, last week, this is what happened on the onside kick. Get a great recovery. If they can recover this, take a shot at the end zone, touchdown, we got a different game, right? <laughs> Houston trailing by five. Ten seconds left. Here's the onside kick. Now that's not going to go ten. I don't. Did, did that go ten yards? I don't think it went ten yards. No way. It was uh, recovered by Matt Hogan, the kicker, but it didn't go ten yards. Oh baby. What a day for the Knights of Central Florida. Field touching by the kicking team. Possession, first down. The student section is poised. Oh, they're getting ready to rush the field. They asked their head coach, George O'Leary, yesterday. They said, Coach, if we win, can we storm the field? And George O'Leary said, oh, heck yeah, I'll meet you at the 50. <laughs> And he's getting ready to head out to the 50 now. He's got his head gear off. He's got security, bodyguards, and everybody around him. What a day for Central Florida. Final play of the ball game. And now let's take a look at the direct TV player of the game. No question the quarterback from Central Florida, or the running back, excuse me. And he had an excellent game with 32 rush, rush carries, 133 yards, three touchdowns. Bryn Harvey, boy, you could watch him do his thing today. For Akbar, Baja, Biamilla, and our entire CBS College Sports crew, I'm Matt McConnell. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbscollegesports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS College Sports. So long from Orlando. What a day for UCF. They win it 37-32. Thanks for watching.